Okay. Okay. So we are going to have a class on wheel and configuration. And from what we are able to see here, this is about a, a wireless local network configuration where we are going to configure a couple of things here, basically for learning purposes. And um, I mean, I will also give you just activities to do. So first, let's talk about what is uh, the objective for this class today. So first and foremost, we are going to, con uh, to implement a wireless local network using wireless router and a wireless LAN controller. And so we're going to configure uh, a wireless local network to support remote sites. We'll configure a WLC VLAN to use the management interface and the WPS2 pre-shared key authentication. And then we'll configure a WLC wireless local network, that's the LAN controller for the wireless LAN, to use VLAN interfaces, DHCP server, and the WPA2 enterprise authentication. This is a very, very uh, serious uh, assignments that are important for our, our learning. So we'll troubleshoot a common, of course, wireless uh, issues as we move on. And so just like we said, this uh, lab is about remote site uh, LAN, VLAN configuration. And I want us to basically go through, uh, we are going to handle the wireless router uh, a lot and an access point at some point. And um, of course, logging into the wireless router, I want us to do these things practically so that we are able to, you know, to to just see them as they're being done. I, I wouldn't want to put this as theory. And that's why I want to bring up the first assignment here, the first uh, 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 packet tracer assignment uh, for us is, um, configuring a wireless network. So I'm going to just uh, download this particular packet trace activity here. And this activity is just going to open and you can see it's already opening. And um, uh, we can be able to basically see that it has opened and let me just dock it on the left hand side and I can zoom in this particular topology here that we are going to be using. All right. And so we have a couple of devices here. We have a laptop one, laptop two, and laptop three. We have an admin PC and uh, an access point is here. Uh, of course, the WR is the wireless router. We have a, a cloud cluster zero here, and we have a server at cisco.pka. And so what I'm going to do is, is that I want to give us an overview of what we're going to do. So we will use the uh, media provided here to connect to a wireless router, configure the wireless router itself, connect to uh, a wired device to the router, and connect a wireless device to the router as well. And then we're going to add an access point to the network to extend the, its wireless coverage, and then we update some default router settings all right so we are told in this activity we will configure a wireless router and an access point to accept wireless clients and route ip packets and furthermore we will also update some of the default settings so from the part one of our instructions we are told to connect to the wireless router so we will connect the admin pc to the wireless router so the instructions are very clear here. Connect the admin to wireless router using a proper straight through cable uh, through the Ethernet port. So we'll select connections, represent the lighting, all that. Those are things we know how to do. So let's jump into it. And the first thing we need to do is this PC needs to be connected to the wireless router. So we're going to pick uh, at the connections. We pick the copper straight through cable, all right, and put it on fast Ethernet as we've been told, and connect it to the wireless router. We pick the fast, you know, gigabit Ethernet one. And uh, there's a very important 
tool here. This tool here is very important for you to speed up the process uh, within this environment. So I'm going to click on the fast forward time so that the link can go to green. The, inter the link can actually come up. All right. So once we do that, of course, there's so much literature here to be read. You're going to read that because I'll give you time to, you know, to also get to get over it. And then we need the next thing is for the part two. We are called to configure the admin to use DHCP. So the admin needs to acquire an IP address through DHCP. So we'll basically click admin here and then we go to the desktop. All right. And then we go to IP configuration. And right here. We have, you know, part for the static IP here and the part for DHCP. And right now we want it to use DHCP, right? So I'm going to select DHCP. And this uh, PC should receive an IP address. You can see 192.68.0.100 is the IP. A, a, a subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The default gateway is 192.168.0.1. And currently there's no DNS server. All right. But you can see DHCP is successful. At least this is a uh, good news for us. All right. So moving forward, of course, we were told to determine some of those things. So we want to close the uh, IP configuration window to go back to the desktop. And the next task we have here is step three. Is to connect the wireless uh, router. Uh, connect to the wireless router web interface. All right. So we are told to go to the desktop where we currently are. And we need to choose the web browser, which is basically right here. OK, so I'm going to select the web browser to open the web browser right here. And here is our web browser. And then we are given an IP, which is the management IP. To access the wireless router. So the IP, we're going to type it here. We're going to type IP is 192.168. Uh, dot zero dot one. OK, so I'm going to press enter or click go either of them and I'm going to be prompted to put a username and a password. And I am told the username and the password is both admin admin. So admin for the username, press tabs key to take you to the next tab. And then at password is also admin and I'm going to press enter. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how you log in into the graphical user interface of your wireless router. Normally, your wireless router at the bottom should always have, or at the back, should always have the IP. The IP address and the default passwords and usernames are always found at the back of your wireless router. Okay, so you need to first normally make sure that your laptop is using an Ethernet cable is connected at least to either the Ethernet port or your wi laptop is connected already using Wi-Fi, using the wireless network from the wireless router. Otherwise, we are saying you must be in the network to connect to the network. That is very, very important, either using wireless or using cable. Then once you put the IP address, just launch, open any browser, and put the IP address of the browser, and then it's going to prompt you to put the password and the username. And you put it, and you will be within the graphical user interface, as you can already see here. All right. From here, we are told to do a few things here. We are told that under the network setup, uh, basic setup page, we notice that the range of the IP address of the DHCP server. I want us to see that here. So looking at this particular topology here, we can see that the management IP address is actually here. All right. And the subnet mask is here. And you realize that currently this wireless router is enabled for DHCP. 
And that is how our, our PC was able to receive an IP address from this particular server. Now, the content of the DHCP pool, the first IP address or the starting IP is 192.168.0.100. And it has a maximum of 50 hosts. And that's why the range is from 192.168.0.100 all the way to 0 0.149, giving us the 50 addresses there. All right. Currently, there's no any DNS server addresses. As we move on, we will fill in some of those ones. All right. So we now need to um, we need to you know see that the, the IP that had been received remember was one zero dot hundred the first IP here. It was the one that our PC had received the first, the very first from the pool. All right, let's move on to the step four here. And step four is basically configuring the, the internet port of our wireless router. We need our wireless router to be able to be connected to the ISP network. And so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to give it a static IP address as we have been told. All right. So we will configure the internet port of our wireless router and you can see that the internet port is actually right here. This is the internet setup part here and you're going to change this from DHCP to static. All right. So we are told to change it from so I'm going to click this one and select static IP and therefore we are now needed to we are now needed you know just just a minute guys uh okay So we are now needed to put some static IPs. So on the internet IP, we're going to put a public IP there and 209.165. All right, sorry, 209.165. Use the tabs key to move to the next part. The 200.225, all right? Then the subnet mask is 255.255.25. Uh, .255. The tab key is going to be very important for you here. The 252 is slash 30. And the subnet mask is 209. Uh, dot 165.200. Dot dot 226, all right? And we're given a DNS here of 209.165.201.1. That is our DNS server. And we are told to scroll down and click save. So you're gonna scroll at the very bottom here and click save. All right, and at this point we might get a request timeout message. Uh, we need to close the admin window. All right, yeah, you can see the request has timed out, so we just need to close this window and open the web browser again. And this time around, uh, click okay, okay. OK. So we have already opened it, but we want to check if it is really connected uh, to the Internet. The wireless router that is. So we want to try and see if you can browse this web server here. This web server is www.cisco.pka. So we can actually do that right here. So just type www. Dot Cisco. Dot P 
PKA and I'm going to press enter. And the host is actually and resolve. So what I need to do is. I need to click the fast forward to be able to, you know, to make that process to be much faster. And I'm going to do it again. And so. I come back here to the browser. All right, be a little bit patient and www dot cisco dot pka and when I press enter. Um, let's wait and see what happens here. All right. Okay. Uh, it will be able, correct, correct. Once you're able to see these pages here, just know you're good to go. Okay. Once you can see Cisco Packet Tracer, and you can see, you know, an image of Cisco here. If you click any of those links, oh, you are good to go. You are good to go. So we have been able to access the web server right here, the Cisco.pka. And that was so successful. Of course, we have 25 marks here. And just to give you a little bit of what I mean, 25 marks already here. These are the IP information here provided for us to be able to do we saved and the instructions are right here. All right, so we move to the next section, which is part two of our work. And what we are going to do at part two is that we are going to configure the wireless router with a new SSID. All right, so we will still use the IP address to access that device. Then you go to the wireless settings and they set a new ID of a company with capital C. All right. And we set the channel to six, that is 2.437 gigahertz. And we are going to disable uh, frequency five gigahertz. We are only going to work with 2.4. All right. And then you're going to save our settings. So let's let's kick it off again. So to do this, you might want to close this browser and launch it again. And once the browser launches, then we're going to put the IP again, 192.168.0.1. All right. So uh, it's admin, uh, admin for both password and username. And there we go. We are already here within uh, the graphical user interface of our router. So what we do is we're going to need to clear this a, a section of you know tabs here. You can see wireless is here, security is here, access point, administration, so on and so forth. So we are going to work with wireless. So by clicking wireless here, all right, by clicking wireless, we uh going to go to the first settings of wireless and you should actually see it right here this is 2.4 gigahertz and this is five and five gigahertz two and five gigahertz one which we will disable so let's configure the 2.4 gigahertz so because it is enabled we give it the ssid we were told was a company a company is the SSID right here. And we're going to choose the standard channel to six. All right. And we're going to select the. Um, we select number six and then we're going to disable just uh, both five gigahertz channels. And after that, we just need to scroll at the bottom and save our work. All right. And once we do the saving, we need to continue to configure more wireless security settings. And again, I'll give you a preview. So we will go to wireless again. This time around, we go to wireless security. Under 2.4 gigahertz, we'll choose WPA2 personal at a security mode. For encryption, we'll choose the advanced encryption standards, the AES that we did talk about yesterday. And then the password that the wireless 
end devices, laptops, tablets will be using is Cisco 123 with an exclamation mark and the Cisco, the C is capital. And then you're going to save our settings. All right. So, um, so let's now do that. We're going to come back to connecting wireless devices later on. So for now, let's go to a bit of wireless settings here. Since I'm already at wireless settings, but I need to show you where we will find wireless security. You click wireless, then you click wireless security at the bottom of security here. Don't go to security. Click wireless security. And so we're going to select uh, for 2.4. We select WPA2 personal right here. We leave the encryption to AES, and then the passphrase is Cisco123 with an exclamation mark. And I have already put it there, and you can see that right here. Okay. And after that, we are basically going to save our work. Scroll at the bottom, and we're going to save our work. Now, after saving our work, the next thing we want to do is basically to, you know, we now want to connect some devices over here. So looking at my screen again, we're going to start with the laptop one. All right. We go to the desktop, then you click PC wireless. And then we're going to click connect and then refresh to see any nearby access points using their SSID. And our target SSID is A company. We'll collect, click on it, and it will prompt us to put a password. Just like you connect your mobile phone to a Wi Fi network, it's not anything new. And then we, of course, later on, on the, on the, on the laptop one, we're going to, you know, browse to Cisco.pka, the web server, and we'll repeat the same thing for laptop two. All right, so let's go in. Let's go in and see what happens. So uh, I can actually minimize this and I have laptop one, laptop two and laptop three. And I'm going to start with the laptop one here. Go to the desktop and then go to PC wireless. All right. So click connect here and refresh to be able to see any, any. And you can see our SSID is already here and it is at 89%. So that's the one you're going to choose. All right. So select it and then click connect. And as you can see, I'm needed to put a password here. All right. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So it is Cisco123 with an exclamation mark. All right. Once I do that, I'm going to need to click connect right here to connect to that Wi Fi. All right. So click that, and my network needs to already be connected. I can close it and just see that laptop one is already communicating with the wireless router. That's a good sign. So that's just a network, but we need to know, can it access? First of all, we need to see if it receives an IP address. Definitely did. And we can see that IP even on the command prompt. So say IP config. And looking at other RP config, you can see that it did receive an IP of 101 here, subnet mask and default gateway as well. And we can browse to the web server. Let me just open my browser. And as we wait for the browser to come up, here we go. We can go to www.cisco. The PKA, and you realize that that is we are able to see to be able to access that server. That's good news, and I could minimize that because we are told to do it on laptop two as well. Go here, go to the desktop, go to our PC wireless, uh, connect and refresh to see any SSID here. There we go. We have a company. Connect to it and put a password of, you know, Cisco123. That is a Wi Fi password. And click connect. And this as well needs to, you can see it's already 
receiving a connection to the wireless router. Very, very important. And we could we might want to browse to see if that laptop can be able to, you know, to can be able to access the web server here. So let me see that here. So I will just do www.cisco dot pka and there you go it's been able to access the server all right so that's good news there then the next thing to do is now we need we need the access point also remember you might have a wireless router in your house but you in the next room or in the neighbor's place you like the neighbor to get internet extension from your wireless router so they have an access point but they need to connect that access point to their house. So we're going to need a cable running from the wireless router to the access point. And that's exactly what I want us to do. So we are going to work on um, part three, which is, uh, uh, you know, step one. We're told an access point is a device that extends the wireless local network. So an access point is connected to a wireless router using an Ethernet cable to project the signal to a desired location. You get that? So we connect the port zero of the access point to an Ethernet port on the wireless router using a straight through cable. All right, using a straight through cable. Then you're gonna click the access point on the config tab and we will, under the interfaces heading, we'll select port one, all right? Then we'll enter the SSID, select the, encryption which is the ps uh, wpa2 psk pre share the key and then you put the password as the one you created keep the aes as the encryption mod and that's it so let's see how to do that so the first thing we're gonna pick a proper straight through put it here on access point port zero and on wps2 i'm gonna put it on uh, port two i can fast forward here to take it to green I might want to just move it a little bit far here. And I now want to configure the access point to be in agreement with the wireless router to get connect to extend the connectivity. So click on it. Once I click on it, then I need to, you know, I need to go to the config tab here and I select port one. And there you go. I need to put the SSID as a, a company and WPA2 PSK. I hope you can be able to see that which I'm doing. So a company is the SSID, WPA2 PSK. And then I'm going to need to put the password here. And the password was Cisco123 exclamation. And AES as the encryption, we leave it at there. And once we do that, we will just, you know, uh, close this. And now we need to connect a wireless client, which is laptop three. And so we're gonna open laptop three here. And we go to the desktop here and click PC wireless and click connect and refresh. And upon refreshing, we are told to select the network name with the strongest signal uh, channel and click connect. So right here, you realize that we have two A companies. One is at 81% and one is at, one is at, you know, A company 97. But we are told to select the one for channel one. I can see that here. We need the one for channel one, all right? And moving here, you see we have channels. Channel one is actually 81 and channel uh, six is it. So we're gonna choose channel one. All right, so I'm gonna choose channel one and I'm gonna connect to it and I click says the password is uh, Cisco, one, two, three, exclamation. And I'm gonna say connect and I can close it, you know, and you can obviously see 
that laptop three has gotten connectivity from the access point itself. This is interesting, all right? And so this might be your neighbor's room or house, and they can now get using an access point internet connection from your own wireless router. And the next thing that we want to do is we now want to change some settings on the wireless router. And we need to log into it from the admin PC. So right here, we are already logged in. And we need to go back to Internet setup here. Actually, we need to go to management. Management is right here, right here. And under management, you are told to change the password here. The password was initially uh, admin it was the password and the username was admin. We are only going to change the password only, not the username. So the username will remain admin, but you're told to change the password to Cisco. So I'm going to type Cisco there. And I'm going to retype it, Cisco. And I'm going to need to go and just save my work. And when I save my work, I expect to lose connectivity, all right? To save it, I'm prompted to put a new a new username, which was admin, but the new password is now Cisco. And then I press enter, and then I click continue. Cisco settings was successful. I'm back now with a new password, all right? And the last thing we do here is we now need to change the some addressing features here. And we're going to need back to go back to setup. And on this basic setup here, I'm needed to change a few things. So I'm told that the IP address range is currently 192.6.0. Uh, right here, 0 0.1, as you can see here. We need to change it to 50.1. So where this 0 0.1, I'm going to type there 50. And verify that the address is now starting at. Uh, it still starts at 100. You can see that here. And there are 50 available hosts, as you can see here. In the DHCP pool, so we need to add a DNS server right here of 209. Uh, 209 .165 all right. Having done that, we need to scroll down and save the work and see the switch changes take place here now. So you realize that now, Changes have taken. We had put 50 here, and now everything has changed to 50 here, and 50 is the IP right here. After that, of course, there's a timeout here, but because of that timeout, we just need to close the admin web browser, and we need to let this PC, the admin, go to the command prompt. And we need it to renew uh, re or to acquire, reacquire the correct IP address. Because currently, if you check at IP config, it is showing, uh, it's still showing here. It's actually showing an APIPA address. I, I think we did talk about this. It's showing 169. The moment you see 169, you know that that is an APIPA address, it's a wrong address. This device did not acquire the correct IP address. It didn't actually find a DHCP server. So this command, IP config space forward slash renew. I don't think you've ever heard of this. IP config space forward slash. Um, uh, forward slash renew. And press enter and give it a few seconds. And you can see that our device has now acquired the correct IP address starting with 50.102. Very important. And um, we need to verify that this device can still uh, navigate to Cisco.pka. We can actually ping it here. We can ping the website name of www.cisco.pka. 
PKA and enter that. And let's give it a few seconds. We should get uh, 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 replies from that particular server. Give it a few seconds here. And you should be able to see uh, some echo replies. And you can see the replies are right there, All right? And it even tells us the exact IP address of that server. We just pinged the name itself, but we got the IP as well. All right, beautiful. Then the next thing we need to do is that we also need to not notice that um, we need to renew the IP address on the other laptop as well. We need to do that, so let's see that. And a new development has been made that we are told to not if not. And uh, we'll talk about it anyway. We we'll, let's go to uh, is it this one here? Let's go to the laptops. But the laptops are still having the wrong IP. You can see. Oh, this one has acquired 50 uh, that. What about this guy here? Uh, this guy seems to have acquired the IP address 50.103. And this guy has acquired. Uh, this is still at zero, so we need to go here. Go to the command prompt and say IP config space forward slash renew. There you go and give it some time and there you go. It has already acquired the IP that was required of it. Now, can you can you see something here? That laptop one is shifted is focused from wireless router and laptop one has acquired an IP from the access point. That's very interesting. Yes, and there are reasons to do with either it's the channel or the strength of the access point or whatever that is. So uh, that is normally bound to happen. That's shifting, you know, but we've been able to successfully configure uh, our wireless router. We've accessed it through the graphical user interface. We have connected it to wireless devices like these laptops. We've also managed to connect an access point to the wireless router. And we have managed to connect the wireless the access point to an an uh, uh, an a wireless device, a laptop three. But we have also seen something abnormal of one wireless device shifting from one device from the wireless router to an access point here. All right. So we have managed to do a record of a hundred percent on this, and this is definitely something I would like you to try. Now, this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. I want us now to do a more advanced one and see basically what happens, all right? And at this point in time, I, I would like to minimize this, and I would like us to basically, you know, um, looking at this topology here we are going to work on this topology where there's an access point here this uh switch this our router here and there's a LAN controller what is a LAN controller as we did say yesterday a LAN controller is a device that is used to manage different access points if you have several access points in the network the LAN controller can be used to manage them so that the wireless routers you can log into them using the, from the same LAN controller, wireless LAN controller, all right? And so I want us to be able to log into the WLC. We want to work on the WLC, follow instructions to create a wireless uh, network there. And once we create the wireless network, we are going to do some configurations, you know, and, uh, you know, we're going to add a wireless network and add an access point and uh, that access point will have some users some clans here wireless clans you know very important so this is the cisco graphical user interface and it's it's been integrated also within the packages activity and i think there's so much just to learn now we are going to receive to see you know uh, icons like this and looking at this one you can see there's only one port currently that is active actively connected to one particular access point so this is actually a LAN controller the device 
and this controller is being connected to one access point. OK, and now that access point can connect to two different users. This is uh, our, of course, our access point is here. And so we are going to do a couple of things uh, right here. So let me just open this activity and we can thereafter just see how we can be able to make this to work to our favor. All right. So the first thing that we are definitely going to do, uh, the packet tracer is just opening uh, right now, and you can see it right there. And um, once, of course, that is uh, gets to be done, then we can now be able to go through it slowly by slowly. Yeah, and you can see the topology that we're going to be dealing with. I could just close this one. And I could dock this one. And I'm going to increase the topology here so that you can see it pretty well. All right, so you can be able to see, of course, the topology here. There's a server, a router. There's a lot of three switch here, and this um, this is an access point. We call it the access points uh, being managed by WLCs. We call it LAPs, the lightweight access point. We call them lightweight access points. This is a wireless LAN controller, WLC one, controller one. So controller one is going to control this access point, and the access point is going to provide connectivity to the other wireless devices like the wireless host here. And so. We are going to do a couple of things, and this table is going to be very important for us. Table with the routers, IP addresses are here, and we are having some intervillian routing here. You can see the G001.55 and the 200, and we do have a VLAN 200 within our switch, and this um, LAN, the access point is using DHCP, and the LAN controller has a management IP of 192.60.200.254. Of course, we have a server, admin PC, and the wireless host there. So looking at the background of this, we are told that you'll explore some of the features of a wireless LAN controller. You'll create a new LAN, WLAN, or LAN, wireless LAN on the controller and implement security on that LAN. Then you'll configure a wireless host to connect to the new LAN, uh, wireless LAN through an access point that is under control of the controller. And finally, we will verify connectivity. All right, so these are some of the things that we are going to do. Now, checking at the background information, an organization is centralizing control of their wireless LAN by replacing their standalone access points with lightweight access points and a wireless LAN controller. So you'll be leading this project and you will want to be familiar, become familiar with the LAN controller and any potential challenges that may occur during the project. You're gonna configure a WLC by adding a new wireless network and securing it with a WPA2 shared key PSK security. So to test the configuration, you'll connect a laptop to the VLAN and ping devices on the network. Very, very important. So let's get started here. And the first thing you're going to do is that we will wait until STP has converged on the network. You realize the importance of STP. And we can click the packet tracer fast forward timer button to speed up the process until the links turn green. All right, so go to the desktop of our admin PC and open the browser and we need to enter the management IP address of the WLC, which is from the table there. And it must we must specify the protocol as HTTPS. Very, very important. We log in with the username admin and the password is pass, I mean Cisco123. And after a short delay, we will be able to see the WLC monitor summary screen. All right. So Let's let's do that. Let's do one thing at a time here. So we are told to, you know, on the admin PC, we're gonna going to click on it here and go to the desktop and go to the web browser. All right. 
Now, right here, we're going to type the IP address, the management IP address, which should be here on the table. The management IP is actually right here. 192.168.200.254. So 192.168.200.254. I'm going to do a deliberate mistake so that you see whatever it is that I do. So I'm going to press enter. When I press enter, it's actually going to fail, all right? Because I haven't done something. I'm using HTTP when I need to use HTTPS. So what I'm going to do is I'm just enter S after P there. So I'm going to enter S there so that it is HTTPS and press enter again. And boom, we are at the wireless LAN controller window right here. So I'll just click login and it needs me to put a username and password, which we were given. But all the usernames and the passwords, uh, admin is the username and the password is Cisco123. So admin, uh, Cisco123. And when I press enter, it needs to open for me the LAN controller. Uh, uh, graphical user interface and you can definitely see that right here. All right, so from here we can see a couple of things here, guys, that 50 access points are actually supported by this controller, but currently only one is connected. You can see the green port over there and, and um, you know, Can see a couple of things here. We can actually see that the uptime has been five minutes. The management IP, of course, is right here. And uh, we can see that currently only one access point, only one is actually up, and it is up using both 802.11 ANC and BGN, you know, radios standards we did talk about yesterday. And, you know, having noted that, that there's only one access point, the instruction further tells us that we need to click the detail next to the all A APs. So this, the detail right here, you can, you got to mean to be very keen. We need to click this detail here to see more information. So I'm going to click on it and be patient and patiently wait. All right. So looking at it, it's already there and it's open. So I can now see that the access point, the only access point connected to this LAN controller is L, is only one and it's called a LAP, the lightweight access point one. And this is its IP address. And the model number, of course, is right here. This is the model number. Okay. Yeah? So now the thing, next thing to do is uh, we need to create a wireless LAN, okay? We need to create a WLAN, uh, a new wireless LAN, as we're told here, that will configure the settings that are required for host to join the WLAN, okay? This, the LAN access point is there, but you need to create its, its, its wireless, uh, LAN. So to do that, following the instructions provided here, on the WLANs, click WLANs, and you the WLANs are actually right up here. So I'm going to click on the WLANs. Be patient for it to load. As it's loading, we we'll locate the drop down box in the upper right corner of the WLAN access point, and we need to say create new. So right here, again. We selected create new, then we're going to click go. Okay. So I'll click go and wait. Once I click go, we'll told to enter the profile name. All right. So profile name right here. The name you're given is uh, floor two employees. Exactly as it is. Floor two employees. So once I do floor two employees, I need to assign the SSID down here. Assign SSID hyphen five. 
basically to match the VLAN that we have. And then we need to select the ID right here. The ID should actually be five. And basically this is to keep it simple, aligned to the VLAN that we have, since we all have VLAN five. This is not normally a requirement, but it keeps us to understand the topology. Once we do that, we need to click apply right here and be patient uh, to wait. Now that the VLAN has been created, we can now configure features of the network. So we need to click enable. Once we click apply, just wait for it to come. All right. So there's a very important thing that we need to do here. If you forget about this, the VLAN will not be active. So click enable to make the VLAN functional and uh, thereafter. We need to choose the VLAN interface that will be used for the wheel for the VLAN. Eh? So the WLC will use this interface for user traffic. So we need to click the drop down menu on the interfaces right here. And you need to select WP, I mean, VLAN 5, WLAN 5. And that is the interface that was previously configured in the WLC for this activity. Once you do that, we need to select advanced is right here. Select advanced and then we're going to need to scroll down to flex connect. Which is right here. Right here is our flex connect. And uh, we're going to select enable on flex connect for both uh, local switching and local authentication, local auth. Then you need to click apply. And as you click apply, um because if you don't do that the it might not operate so once you click apply just wait for it to come uh give it a few seconds and there we go it's already loaded and we now need to secure the lan the vlan that wireless network we have created we need to secure it so normally the new vlan it doesn't have any security in place okay and that's why um it was initially using uh, the PSK security. And we're going to configure it later on to use uh, enterprise. So what we do right now, we need to edit the, this VLAN uh, of W, uh, I mean, floor two employee VLAN. So we need to click on security here. And then we need to select uh, WPA2, PA plus WPA2. And uh we need to select uh uh click on wpa2 policy right here and then we leave uh we need to select then psk yeah wpa2 policy and then select psk for shared key under the authentication key management and after that we need to put our key remember our key was cisco one two three so we put here uh, Cisco one two three. Okay, let me just repeat that. So Cisco one two three. All right. Once I do that, I need to click apply up here. All right. Let me just scroll this up and click apply. And this pop up, you just gonna need to click OK when it comes. And uh, once you do that, we then need to verify the settings. OK. As we wait for that to happen, we are told to uh, that it's not normally good practice to be using password, but we are doing this for the ease of uh, working here. So after applying that, we will need to. Um, Uh, uh, click back to take us to the VLAN uh, screen. So back is actually right here next to apply. So click back. And back is going to take us to the uh, VLAN screen. And uh, they're asking us what information is available here. Obviously, you can see the ID is five, type is VLAN, and the profile name is floor two. Uh, employees and the SSID 
is SSID 5 and it is enabled and it is using uh, you know, WPA2 authentication with PSK. And we are told that if we click on the WLAN ID, which is number five here, it will be able to take us uh, to the WLAN edit screen and we'll use this to verify and change the details of the setting. So I've just clicked five and let's give it some uh, few seconds just to load up before we can now be able to connect uh, some hosts here. So to connect to the network and verify connectivity, we need to go to the um, go to PC wireless. This is a PC wireless here. And we're going to need to go to desktop and choose PC wireless here. And we need to, you know, click connect. And we need to refresh it so that we can see the SSID 5. Here we go. And you click connect and you put the password as uh, Cisco 123. All right. And you click connect. And it should be able to uh, basically connect us. And you can see that that has actually happened. The wireless host has connected to the, uh, the lightweight access point. Uh, we need to click link information here. I think we went a little bit earlier. So on clicking link information, of course, we're able to see that we have successfully, you know, uh, uh, connected to the system and I can zoom that in so that we could see the SSID name, the uh, standard is there, the WPA uh, to uh, personal is there and you know the subnet mask the ip address is there uh, the mix of the network channels and you no know, dns of course and all that yeah so that is a very good one and um, we need to close the pc and open the ip configuration to verify that the host has actually received none a pipa so can just close this and go to sorry go to IP configuration and you can see that our host has actually received a valid IP address here you know a PIPA all right so and um, you know basically um I skip something which I wouldn't want you to skip that's why I did get a hundred I am at 77 but I would like you to do the same and just you know, get that because I am. I want to demonstrate something else, uh, but the instructions are pretty much clear. If you followed all those instructions as they are, you will definitely be able to. You will definitely be able to uh, to to score a hundred in 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 connecting this one here. Yeah. So I I this was uh, this is for um, configuring the VLAN. And adding um, adding uh, uh, the lightweight access point onto the WLC and connecting the wireless, you know, to the lightweight access point. So I'm gonna give you a similar one, basically to try for yourself. Now I want us to do a, a final one, which is more advanced than this one. And um, uh, buying some of this equipment is very expensive. We don't have them even at our academy, and we. Uh, so an academy normally rely on the packetless activities for put to practice because they simulate the real uh, VLAN uh, controller. Now, having talked about that, let me now go down here. And there are a couple of videos here, by the way, that I will give you two guys to watch and so that you can be able to be able to do that. So we going to configure WPA to enterprise VLAN. Whatever we have done was for uh, a personal use, for home use. What if we are in a, a, a company environment or an university environment where there are so many students? That is when now we use the AAA server, all right? And that is what I actually want us to, to do right now. The last thing just before we have a break. So let me open this one, 
uh, the WPA2 enterprise we learn on a WLC. Uh, this is a very interesting one. Uh, and I would like you to just pay attention and see how it actually gets to be done. All right, so I'm going to dock it. And then I can actually increase, zoom it in uh, to be able to be seen by all of us. And I could want to just bring this up a little bit. All right, so this still WLC is still the wireless uh, host. The LAN access point is here, and the layer three switch is here. This time around, we have a radius server, which is going to implement uh, with implemented with a triple A server. And this is a very interesting one. And looking at the instructions here, you realize that we will configure a new VLAN interface on the LAN controller. We will configure a new VLAN on the LAN controller. We'll configure a new scope of the DSP server, and then we we'll configure a WLC to use simple network management protocol settings. And we'll configure uh, uh, the LAN controller to use a radius server for authentication and authenticating users. You know, this is, we are now talking about a very large group of people in an organization, in a school, where we have so many people using the wireless LAN. And so we'll enable the WPA2 enterprise, not personal this time around, all right? And we'll connect host to the new WS. So let's see uh, at what extent we can do. And then I'm gonna give you a similar, you know, just to be able to, uh, to jog your minds as well with that. So let me give you a little bit of background here. So you have already configured and tested the LAN controller with an existing uh, WLAN here, a wireless LAN. You have configured WPA2 PSK, pre-shared key for that uh, uh, wireless LAN because it was to be used in a small business. You have been asked to configure and test uh, uh, a wireless LAN controller topology that will be used in a large enterprise, all right? You know that WPA2 with a pre-shared key does not scale well and is not appropriate to use in a large or an enterprise network. So this new topology will now use a radius server and WPA2 enterprise to authenticate your wireless LAN users. And this administration, I mean, this allows administration of the user accounts from a central location and provides enhanced security and transparency because each account has its own username and password. In addition, user activity is logged on the server as well. That is very important. Who logs in? At what time do they log in? What password do they use log in? So in this lab, you're gonna create a new VLAN interface. Use that interface to create a new wireless local area network and secure that VLAN with an WPA2 enterprise. You'll also configure the LAN controller to use enterprise radius server here to authenticate users. In addition, you'll configure the wireless controller to use the simple network management protocol server. So this is a very interesting one. And you can see our simple topology, of course, is right here. And let's jump into it and see what does it have. All right. So um, we are told that each VLAN, each wireless LAN requires a virtual interface because the VLAN on the WLC. And these interfaces are known as dynamic interfaces. So the virtual interface is assigned VLAN ID and traffic that uses the interface will be tagged as a VLAN traffic. This is why connections between PCs, I mean access points, the LAN controllers and the okay, wireless LAN controllers and the router are over a trunk port, you know, to carry traffic from one VLAN to another VLAN. And for the traffic from multiple VLANs to be transported through the network, traffic for the VLAN VLANs must be trunked. That is very important to note. So if, to start us off is we need to open a browser from the desktop of admin PC and connect to the IP address of the LAN controller over HTTP, very important. So, we go to the admin PC here, 
and we go to the browser. All right, and we need to pick up the IP, the IP address of the WLC, which is from table. And the IP address of the WLC is the management IP is 192.168.200. Dot two five four. Now pressing enter doesn't give me anything as usual because I'm using HTTP here and I need to make it to HTTPS. So I'm going to just add an S there and press enter again and that will take me to the LAN controller interface and I click login, of course, and they did give me the password here. And the username is admin. And the password is Cisco. One, two, three. And press enter. And you can see that that obviously takes me to the wireless LAN controller, graphical user interface. You can see that. All right. So what we now want to do is we now want to be able to do this really, really well. And let me just um, uh, check on this. All right. So to check on this again, we have been able to, of course, see our uh, graphical user interface of our controller here. And to start us off, we need to click the controller menu and they are all here. You, I hope, can see the menus here. We have monitor, we have VLANs, we have controller, we have wireless, security, management, commands, help, feedback, so on and so forth. So we are going to see the controller, as we are told. And give it a few seconds to just load up. And once it's loaded up, we need to click on interfaces. All the instructions are here. We give it a few seconds. And we should see the default virtual interface. That's what they tell me. So the default virtual interface is right here. And we need to click new, basically to create a new one. And new, you must need to move your uh, sidebar scroll. And we need to find new at the top right corner here. And once we click that, we're going to need just to give it some time and it should bring us a new interface, as you can see. And on the new one, we need to call it WLAN 5. So WLAN hyphen 5, WLAN 5. And we need to give it an ID, a VLAN ID of 5. Five is our villain ID, sorry. The villain ID is five, right? And once you give it the villain ID, this is the villain that will carry traffic for the villain that we created. So we need to click apply. So IP here, click apply. And um, this leads to a configuration screen for the villain interface. Gonna open for us a new configuration screen that we can see here now for the VLAN interface. So first we need to configure the interface to use a uh, physical port number one, all right? So multiple VLAN interfaces can use the same VLAN physical port because the physical interfaces are normally dedicated track. So on this addressing table here, we need to um, we need to make this port number to one here. And then we need to enter the following IP information. On the IP address, we're going to enter 192.168.5.254. All right. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And the gateway is 192.168.5. Dot five dot one, all right. And the primary DHCP server right here is actually 
192.168.5.1. Okay. And having done that, we are then told that user traffic for the VLAN that uses this VLAN interface will be on the 192.168.5.0 network. And the default gateway is the address of an interface on router one. And a DHCP pool has been configured on the router. So the address that they that we configure here for DHCP tells the WLC to forward all DHCP requests that it receives from the host on the VLAN to the DHCP server on the router. So we need being sure we need to click apply uh, right here. Uh, to enact your changes and click OK to respond to the warning messages. So click OK. And then we're going to also do that. We need to click save and save is hidden up there. And save is right up here. Save configurations. So I'm going to click on save configurations and click OK for this to take. OK. Whatever this restarts. Now we have set up the a new VLAN and you can see this new VLAN and it's actually called uh, VLAN 5. VLAN 5 there and it's on VLAN that one and it's on you know 5.25 for its, its IP address. DHP is still disabled. So we need to configure the WLC to use uh, to use radius. Okay. We need to use WLC to use radius. So what we need to do is that we need to. Uh, so we are told WPA2 Enterprise uses an external radio server to authenticate WLAN users. So individual user accounts with unique names and passwords can be configured on the radio server. So before the WLC can use the each services of the radio server, the WLC must be configured with the server address. So we need to click on. Uh, click on security. You can see security is up here. On the WLC. All right. So once you click on security, then we need to click new, and new is actually on the top right corner. And we need to enter the IP address of the radio server in the server IP address. So we go to the table before we come back to step two. We need to go to the table here and enter the IP address of the uh, radio server. What we told to enter the, let me just check here. We need to enter the address of. Uh, all right, all right. So IP address of the radio server. All right, it's correct. So IP address of the radio server. This is our radio stroke SNMP server. It's 131. Sorry, one one nine one seventy two. Uh, dot thirty one. Dot one. Dot two five four. All right. And then. We need to. Uh, so the radio server will authenticate the WLC before it will allow the WLC to access the user account information on the server. So this required a shared secret key. And so for the sh on the shared secret key right here, we need to put the Cisco one, two, three. Cisco one, two, three. And we need to confirm the same uh, Cisco one, two, three. All right. Once we put it, we need to confirm it by clicking apply right here. You can see it's by default selected 1812 as the port number for the radio server. So click apply. Uh, we're told it's not good use to use reuse passwords, but we are reusing them to make the activity to be easier for us to complete and review. And having done that, we now need to create a new VLAN. We need to create a new VLAN. So we need to click on VLANs right here. You can see them here. Click the uh, uh, click the VLANs there. And allow it to load. And it's come. And we actually need to uh, uh, click go to create a new VLAN right here. So click go. 
give it time and we're going to enter the profile name once that of course loads. So the profile name here is uh, going to be uh, profile name is floor two employees employees here and the SSID as usual is SSID five SSID hyphen five and the ID should be five right here correct all right so we click apply again to change that remember we're creating a new VLAN and um, once you click apply, we are told now that the VLAN has been created as it is applying. We can now configure features of the network. So we need to click enable to enable it right here. Select enable to make it functional. And uh, we are told this can be a very big mistake if it's skipped because you have not you have not enabled it to work. So we need to choose the VLAN interface right here we choose VLAN 5, right? That will be used on the new VLAN. So the LAN controller will use this interface for user traffic on the network. So we need to click the drop down box for interface groups. And we have already done that to select the interface uh, for five. Then we're going to need to scroll down. Oh no, we need first to. Uh, We need to go to advanced, yes. Click advanced. Once you click advanced, we go to flex connect right here and we select uh, local switching and uh, local authentication. And we're going to click apply right here and be patient. Once you do that, the next thing is to configure security. The WLAN security. All right, so just waiting for it to load as we have applied it and it's already loaded. So the next thing, we don't want to use the pre-shared key. This time around, we want to use the WPS2 enterprise. So we'll click the WLAN ID. Uh, a WLAN ID, I just need to know where that is. Okay, so... um. I think that needs to be under security. So under security, we we need to click uh, uh, click WPA two PA plus WPA two personal. I mean WPA two right here. Once you do that, then we are going to under WPA two. We need to enable WPA two policy right here. WPA two policy. Oh yeah, yeah, this is where I need to check WPA2 policy, the lower one here. And on WPA2 policy, I need to click on 802.1x, all right? And under the, we need to, of course this tells uh, the w land controller to use the 802.1x to authenticate users. So we're gonna need to select, um, a uh, AAA servers, which is right here. And on the AA servers, uh, we need to select the server that we configured up there. And this is the IP address of the server on 172.31.1.254 on port 1812. Once you do that, then you're going to need to click apply right here and just say OK. And the last thing is we are going now to configure the DHC, the DHCP scope and the SNMP, okay? And we are told that LAN controllers offer its own internal IP, I mean DHCP server. So Cisco recommends that the wireless LAN DHCP server not to be used for high volume DHCP services such that the required, I mean, such as the required by large user uh, lands. 
However, in small networks, DHCP server can actually be used to provide IP addressing to uh, the lightweight access points that are connected to the wired management network. So in this step, we're going to configure DHCP scope on the LAN controller and uh, to use uh, use it to address the uh, the light ac lightweight access points. So we need to connect to the LAN controller GUI from the admin PC. So um, so we are actually there right now. So we need to connect the controller. Controllers is right here. So click controller. That's where we are right now. Once you click controller, let it load, and then you're going to click on the interface here. Once you click on interfaces, and we need to select which interfaces. You can see our interface is uh, WLAN 5 there. Very important. So we need to click. Um, we need to click the management interface. We are told to click on it because we need to save some information right here. That information we are going to use it to, to configure something else. So it's already brought for us the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway, and the primary uh, gateway server. And you can see that right here. We need to save that information. Now, we currently are on the management uh, interface and we need to save it. And I will just get a small one here. This is my notepad here on the uh, IP address uh, is 1268 That's correct. Subnet mask is slash 24. Gateway is 200.1 here, and the primary, I was not given the DHCP server here, so I'm going to leave it right there. So we are told here that we want to we want the WLC to use its own DHCP server to provide addressing to devices on the LAN management network, so such as lightweight access point. Now, for this reason, we need to enter the IP address of the WLC interface as the primary DHCP. So right here, we need to enter the IP address as the primary DHCP, and that is 192.168.200.254. Very important. It's very easy to get lost here. So just take in and stay with me. So we need to enter that IP address of the management as the primary DHCP server address. So click apply and then click OK. So scroll up, I click apply. I'm going to be prompted and I click OK to acknowledge any messages that appear. OK again. Once I do that, then on the, I think I should wait it to load. Oh, it's already loaded. On the left hand menu, I need to click internal DHCP server, and that is right here internal DHCP server. And I need to click DHCP scope, which is right here. DHCP scope. And I'm going to give you time to just load. All right. So once I do that, we need to create a new scope. So I click new right here. Right here is the new. And we're going to name the new one uh, wired management. So let's just give you time. Here is the name. So we're going to name it. Wired management. It might be easy when I'm doing. I'm not sure whether you'll be doing it, but I just need you to to get it. So we'll configure the DHCP scope to provide addresses to the wired infrastructure network that connects the admin PC, WLC, and the uh, access point itself. So we need to click apply. All right. To create the new scope. Once it applies, then you're going to need to create a new scope in the DHCP. So click new scope, click the new scope in the DHCP scope table to configure addressing information for the scope. So I'm going to click the word management to open so that I can be able to give it some information which I am given here. So the port, the port, the start IP address is supposed to be 192. 
168.200.240. All right. The end IP address is 192.168.200.249. All right. And then we are told the status should be enabled around here, but we need to figure out the network address. We need to figure out the network here. Subnet mask. And the default routers right here. OK, so. Obviously, the network should be here. Looking at the information that we had actually acquired here. You can see the uh, default gateway is 200.1. The network should be 200.0. And of course, the IP address was there. So. Let's put the network address is 192.168.200.0. So 192.168, the details we are told to write down. The 200.0 is the network address. The network mask is 255.255.255.0. And the default router should be dot one. 192.168.200.1. And uh, we need to click apply. Therefore, click apply. But to activate the configurations, then you're going to need to save the configurations. Once apply is already there, then I need to click up there, save configurations, and click OK to enable the MWC to restart, whether to be active wherever it starts. We are almost done, guys. It's been a long day. So you can see successfully saved all configurations. So the internal DHCP server will now provide an address to the 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 LAN access point, the lightweight access point one, after a brief delay. When the uh, the access point has its IP address, the cup of tunnel will be established. And the access point will also be able to provide access to flow two employees uh, using an SSD of SSID 5 of the VLAN. If you move your mouse, if you move your mouse, so let me minimize this and this as well. So I'm told if I move my mouse here, I should be able to see that uh, the, the IP address is actually 192.60.200.240. And um, the status is that it is enabled currently and the uh, status of the tunnel and the is providing access to it's providing access to you can see it's providing access to floor two employees of SSID five and it's connected to 192.68.200.254. That is the tunnel that it is actually currently using. All right, so let's do the second last thing is configuring the SNMP the simple network management protocol and we need to go to admin pc right here okay there's small network hitch here we need to go to the admin pc right here and we need to click at management right here is management and we wait for it to load and once we click management, we need to expand SNMP here. And we need to click trap receivers, which are actually right here, trap receivers, and allow it to load. And once that loads in a few seconds, we need to click new right here. And the new is just loading. And with the new loads, we're going to need, like I told you guys, I don't know whether it is. No, it is not this class. The, uh, the, the SNMP is, was normally used for, you know, providing network management, managing our network devices. So it only disadvantage is that it uses community strings, which are not secure. So we are even given a community string here called WLAN underscore the VLAN underscore SNMP. All right. And the IP address we are given here is for the 
for the SNMP server is what the same IP 172.31.1.254. 172.31.1.254. And um, we just need to apply this. So click apply. I just did. And uh, now we need to configure hosts as the last thing here. We need to configure host to connect to the enterprise network. And then what we do, we told in this workplace activity, the client app, you must configure the profile in order to attach the WLC to enterprise VLAN. So click wireless host. So I'm going to minimize this. So we want to let this wireless host here to be able to access the network through the access point here. So I'm going to click on it. Go to PC wireless. All right. This time around, I, go, I don't go to connect. I go to profile because I'm going to need to create a profile. And on profile, I'm going to need to create new, new profile down here. Click new. And the name of this new profile is going to be WLC space net. WLC net and I'm going to click OK. Now I need to highlight the wireless network name, which is this one. Name for the VLAN and then I need to click advanced right here, advanced setup. And under advanced setup, we need to verify the SSID for the wireless LAN is present and then click next right here. And the wireless host should see SSID 5. If it does not, we need to move the mouse over the LAP. Of course, it's already seeing it. And then we need to verify the DHCP was being used. You can see obtain IP address automatically through DHCP. And then we need to click next. And under security, we need to select WPA2 Enterprise. WPA2 Enterprise, the lower one here. And we're going to need to click Next here. And we need to verify the profile settings that they are actually OK. Uh, security mode, disable, SSID, what, what. Uh, and then we need to uh, just a little bit back. Let me see. Yeah, Enterprise here. Yeah, and then I click next. And then under next, I need to click on. Um, all right, all right. I need to click on. Uh, let me just go back a little bit. Yeah, we're told to choose WP2 Enterprise and click next. Enter login, correct. So user login here. We're going to enter user one. So in small letters, user one. And then the password here is user with a capital U. User one pass with a capital P. And then I click next. And you can see all the settings are currently very well set here. Uh, WPA2, everything is auto, auto, and well. So we're going to need to save this. And I'm giving a congratulations. Your profile has been successfully configured. Okay. So I need to now select the. Um, so I need to, I think I need to continue to network. Connect to network, yes. And under connect network. Uh, you should see the wireless host uh, connect LP1. You can click the fast forward. I can actually do that. Let me just hook this and let me click fast forward. Yeah, it's already come here. It's already have successfully connected to the access point. OK. And um, confirm the wireless host has connected uh, to the VLAN. Wireless host should receive an IP address from DSCP server that is connected for host on R1. And you can be able to see that if you don't do it very well, this PC will not be able to establish the connection to the to the to the the lightweight access point here. This is something requires you to be very keen. 
So the, we are told that the address of that PC of the wireless LAN host, I can actually just close this and check the addressing that it has received. You can see it is within the range of the 5.0 network. It's actually picked 5.3 right here. And the subnet mask is here. Of course, the default gateway is right there. Yeah, and you know, a very interesting one here. So we can actually close the PC up and open a command prompt. Uh, confirm that it has obtained an IP address. That's what we just did here, but they want us to do it on the uh, command prompt. So of course we just do IP config and you can see it did receive an IP address and the IP address is 5.3, subnet mask is here, default gateway. And uh, we can actually ping uh, ping the default gateway. Uh, the default gateway here, which is 192.168.168.5.1. And we can see we are receiving replies over there. Okay. We can also ping the radio server as the last thing. Um, okay, the the, the radio server's IP address was um, it's the last one before we get going. One Okay, and obviously you can see we are receiving replies. A, a very good question is being asked here. You might find it in exam. What is the advantage of WPA2 Enterprise over WPA2 PSK? Yeah, all that. The major advantage, ladies and gentlemen, the major advantage obviously is in the, the number of users that are logging. Okay, uh, uh, it's recommended when you have so many users, use the enterprise. You know, and when you're dealing with a very few group of people, a uh, very few people, then you can always use the PSK, the pre-shared key for authentication. Otherwise, let me give you some assignment and please someone can note this and uh, post in the group as well. So I'm giving some assignment here to work on. Some of them, most of them are going to mirror what we have done today. And of course, this one we performed at 100%. I hope you guys uh, actually saw that we did get 100% uh, uh, on this one. We didn't make any mistake here. So please do note down the following uh, assignments. Uh, 13, 110. 13, 110 is the first one. 13, 110 is a packet tracer. You to do 13, 110 well, you might need to watch a video on 13, 11. Watch a video on 13, 11. To be able to do 13.1.10 well. 13.1.1 will help you to do the assignment on 13.1.10. Then the other one is watch a video on 13.2.1. 13.2.1. To do the PT on 13.2.7. 13.2.7. You might want to just watch that video on 13.2.1 to do 13.2.7. And then we have an assignment. On 13.3.12, so for 13.3.12, you might need to watch a couple of videos here. So the first video is 13.3.1, 13.3.1, then 13.3.5, 13.3.5, then 13.3.8, 13.3.8, and 13.3.10, 13.3.10. Those ones will help you to do the assignment on 13.3.12. 13, 3, 12. And then I'll give you some bit of troubleshooting here to troubleshoot a wireless network on 13.4.5. This is an assignment on 13.4.5. 13.4.5. And the mother of all the assignments, the mother of all the assignments is on 13.6, 13.5.1, sorry, 13.5.1. So 13.5.1 is going to combine all those things that we have been talking about. 13.5.1 will combine everything that we have talked about. You will have a very, uh, a very giant, uh, a very giant uh, PT there. 
that combines everything you've learned. And there's an explore, exploration PT. These ones are always provided by Cisco on 1352. Please just explore and be able to check out how you know that wireless technology actually it is a, a big one, about 19.5 MB. All right. So on exploring wireless technology exploration. It's a, a very large cooperation. Actually, it's called XYZ Cooperation, which is expanding their network capabilities to allow enhanced connectivity at their local offices. OK. So as well as connectivity for those wishing to work remotely. So in this activity, you have been asked to assist with a plan to review the current network capabilities and add wireless functionality as required. This will give you more practice. Please be patient. It may take several minutes for this PT to load. You see, they are telling you to be patient. OK, it's because it's a bit heavy, so you you will download it and just follow the instructions and be able to see exactly how that works. So I think I would like to stop there with uh, those in place. I think those should be able to basically uh, give you enough practice to be able to do that. Uh, so I will. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, our next class now, we need to do uh, the last thing, which is called routing. And we'll, the last three chapters, the next three chapters, the next last three chapters is uh, having to do with routing. Remember, we have been working on switches. Then we went to the wireless networks. And now the next one will be on, will be on routing. And we want to, how does the work, the router do the work that it does, okay? And that will be it. So um, I would like to stop there. Uh,